So today I want to talk about the private space feature on Graphene OS. But before we get into that, I want to mention that I do offer paid consulting. I truly think anyone can figure out anything given enough time, but there are some people that prefer to save time by spending money. And if that's you, then I am happy to help. Whether you're an individual just getting started with Graphene OS, or you're looking to get into self-hosting, or maybe you're a business looking to improve your overall security or privacy. If you want to find out more, you can head on over to sideofburritos.com and click on the schedule consultation. I want to start by going through the official announcement first by the Graphene OS team on the discussion forum. I realize this was posted almost a year ago and some things have changed since the initial announcement, but I still think it's beneficial to go through. So Graphene OS fully supports the private space feature on Android 15, which is essentially a separate user nested inside of the owner user. This last part is something that has changed already. The private space feature is available in all users, not just the owner profile anymore. The team strongly recommends it as a replacement for a work profile managed by a local profile admin app. It has better OS integration and isolation. So if you're using something like Shelter on your phone currently to create a work profile, this is a great replacement. The private space is an isolated workspace profile for apps and data similar to both user profiles and work profiles. All three forms of profiles have entirely separate VPN configurations, which is very useful even if you are connected to the same VPN, since exit IPs can be separate. That part might sound a little bit confusing, but I'll explain that better in the demo. All forms of profiles have separate encryption keys. You can keep a private space at rest while the owner user is logged in, just as you can with a secondary user. This was a big reason I always liked using secondary users. You could end session on that user profile and now it's at rest as compared to the owner user profile, which you need to be logged into in order to use your device. Now you can have a single profile set up. You can use the owner user profile. You can have a separate private space in there and you can then put that private space at rest if you have something running that you don't always want running. Whereas before you needed a secondary user profile. Uh, the private space makes it easier to share data than users. The clipboard is shared, but we could add a setting for it. They have added a setting for that, which I will point out. And all of the features, including contact scopes, storage scopes, and sandboxed play services have full support of private space. So if you use any of those features and you are concerned about them not working in the private space, they do work. Currently, I think a lot of users use a separate user profile if they want to use sandboxed Google Play. And while this does provide great isolation, it can be cumbersome to switch to that separate user in order to use apps. Now with private space, you get the same benefit of the isolation, but it's much more convenient to use those apps in the same user profile that you always use. I realize a lot of this might sound confusing in the way I'm explaining it, but hopefully that'll be cleared up in the demo. So let's get into that. So here I am in my owner user profile on a Pixel 7 running Graphene OS. The first thing we're going to do is set up a private space. And again, this works in any user profile. So if you're in a secondary user, you can follow the same process and set one up there. So the first thing is going to settings, scroll down to security and privacy. At the bottom here, you'll see private space, tap on that. The screen will then prompt you for your user pin. So type that in. Here we have some details about the private space. I suggest reading through that. At the bottom, there is a warning. Private spaces are not suitable for apps that need to run in the background or send critical notifications, such as medical apps. This is because notifications and background activity are stopped when your space is locked. So as the warning states, if the private space is locked, notifications will not work. But if the private space is not locked, then notifications should work. But do your own testing on this before depending on it for something that is critical to your health or well-being. So once you read through that, you can tap set up at the bottom right. Once that finishes, you are prompted with an option to choose the lock method for your private space. You can either use your screen lock or choose a new lock. I've just been using my screen lock, but if you want to make that different from your screen lock, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to tap on use screen lock. And it's all set tells you where you can go to find it. We're going to click done. And as you can see, I'm now in the app drawer. If you want to get there, just swipe up from the home screen. And we now have the private space at the bottom. 
On the right side, you can see the lock icon. It's currently locked, which means the private space is locked. So if we tap on that, I'm going to enter my current lock screen pin. If you set something different, it'll be that pin or password. And once you enter that correctly, you are now presented with the private space. So a couple things. Again, it's unlocked. If we swipe up and we go back, it's still unlocked. If you tap the lock button, it'll lock the private space. And again, you can unlock it. And just a reminder, if the private space is locked, those apps are not running. So if you need a notification from any apps in your private space, those will not work. So as you can see, there are some apps already installed in the private space. These are the same default apps that come on Graphene OS when you install it. But you will notice that each app installed in the private space has a small icon at the bottom right. So anything with that shield and key icon means that it's an app installed in the private space. So now there's a couple ways that you can install apps into the private space. If you tap the install button here, it's going to open the Graphene OS app store. And from here you can install Google Play Store and Google Play Services. I think this is a great option for people that are currently using a separate user profile for any apps that require Play Store. With this, you can install Play Store here, install the apps in there as well. It provides that separation you get with a user profile while also having the ability to lock the private space and turn it off when you're not using it versus having it installed in your owner user profile where you can't do that without powering your phone down. So let's check out some of the settings related to the private space. If you tap the gear icon next to the lock icon, these are the private space settings. At the top, we can see private space lock. If you want to change it to not use the device screen lock, you can do that. We then have the option to lock private space automatically. By default, it's set to every time device locks. So if you want it to run continuously in the background, you should change it to only after device restarts. The next one is hide private space. By default, this is turned off. What this does is it hides the private space from the app drawer. So if I enable that, then go into the app drawer and lock the private space. You no longer see it. Now, in order to access it, you have to go into settings and security and privacy, then down to private space, unlock it. And then if you go to the app drawer again, you can see our unlocked private space. For me, I keep this off. I'm not trying to hide my private space from anyone. I'm the only one that uses my device. Yes, it adds some obscurity to the private space in your user profile, but I don't depend on obscurity for my security. So not really a feature I need. The next one is cross profile shared clipboard. The default option is follow defaults, allow system default sharing the clipboard from and to the parent user and its other child profiles. So that means that you can copy and paste from the main user that you have the private space in to the private space user. This is a personal option, whichever one you want, go with that. I'm going to skip the install available apps for now, show you that in a minute. The last option is end session immediately on lock. Disallow delayed locking of storage when stopping or locking the current private profile. This allows locking to work like end session to full secondary users when strong authentication is required to unlock the storage. To be honest, I don't exactly understand this option. Can't hurt to enable it, I'm assuming. But if anyone has any more details about it, feel free to share those down below. At the very bottom, we have the warning again that we saw in the initial setup. So again, if you have notifications you depend on for your wellness or health. Make sure to test those before relying on this permanently. So going back now to the install available apps. As I showed you initially, we had the install option in the private space that opened the Graphene OS app store. But what this option allows is similar to when you use a separate user profile and you have the install available apps option. If you tap on that, you now get a list of all the apps installed in the current user profile. So again, if you're in a secondary user, it won't show all apps on the phone. But now installing apps to the private space is as simple as toggling the option next to the app. So if we go to Molly and tap that, now if we go back, 
we now see that Molly is in our private space. The default apps are separated by that horizontal rule on the screen. So you know which ones you installed and you know which ones came by default in the private space. And again, we see the little icon in the bottom right of the Molly icon, so we know it's in our private space. And that is helpful because if we go to search apps and we type Molly, we can tell which one is in our user profile and which one's in the private space based on that icon. That icon is also helpful because if we open the private space version of Molly, we now see at the top right the private space icon, so we can tell that we are in a private space version of the app. So as an example, you might have Signal installed in the main owner, and you also want a separate instance of Signal, so you can use another phone number in the private space. That's a quick way to tell which one you're in. If you see that icon, you're in the private space version of Signal or Molly. And if you don't see that icon, then you're in the standard user profile version of the app. And the last thing I want to explain is what was listed in the initial announcement, which is all three forms of profiles have entirely separate VPN configurations. So what that means is that in my main owner user profile, I have ProtonVPN installed. If I was signed in and connected, that VPN profile would only apply to the main owner user and not the private space. If you want to test this out, connect to your VPN in the main owner user or whatever, you're, whatever user you're in. Go to Vanadium, check what your IP address is, then go to the private space Vanadium and you will see a different IP address whatever your home IP address is or cellular connection. If you want to apply a VPN to your private space, you need to go through the settings, install available apps, install the VPN, sign in, connect. And while that might sound kind of cumbersome, it is nice having that separation and gives you an option to set different countries or exit IPs per profile. This behavior is the same thing as secondary user profiles on Graphene OS. Each user profile needs its own VPN profile installed. I have been testing out the private space feature for the past few weeks. It's been working well. It's much more convenient to use than the separate user profile. The only app I noticed some oddities with was the MySudo app. Some calls and texts were behaving oddly, or at least notifications were. I reached out to the MySudo team and they said it should be supported in any type of profile. So I'm going to continue my testing before fully committing to it and deleting my secondary user. But I think the private space is a great option for a lot of people, especially if you're just getting started. It makes the transition much easier than having a separate user or you need to switch whenever you want to use those apps or whenever you get a notification there. So looking back at my notes, I covered a lot of information in this video. Hopefully it didn't come across as too confusing and it can serve as a good place to get you started. If you've been testing the private space feature, feel free to share your experience. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below, and I'll see you next time.